Hi, and welcome back to Saga Hunter's YouTube channel. I had a request for a review of the Jackson Aquarell the crayons I used the other day on a stream. And I decided to, to kind of make a comparison type video. So I will be taking the Coronor Progresso Aquarell uh, woodless sticks and the compare the, both of them to the new color that, that a lot of people know and, and talk a little bit uh, about all of them um, and I'm gonna use Ella Clefontaine Aquel Festival paper I got this little pad and so it's it's a fair uh, watercolor paper um, I'll pause the camera and I'll pull some things out of this and then we'll talk again. Okay, I took a uh, blue, a red and a yellow of each of of these. Um, and because somebody asked me on, on my stream the other day how much difference there was from the, the Jacksons and the the new color. So here's a new color and here's a Jackson. So they are slightly bit shorter. They're about the same size in width, but uh, but these are a lot cheaper. Um, the Jacksons are. They kind of fit in each other's boxes, so fairly okay, especially if you want a a little bit down on your new color. So um, yeah. That was the size. Obviously, these uh, Progresso sticks are not crayons. They're, they're more like woodless pencils. But they, they're used in pretty much the same manner. And you get... the, the, the What it has in common with these is that you, you get a lot of pigment out of it. It's, it's full pigmented all the way through. There's a little bit of varnish on this one. But there's no wood, so... So you get a lot more pigment out of one of these compared to a watercolor pencil. Um, and they can be, th these can be used in the same manner as, as these, pretty much. So, the, let's talk about the max box sizes. I got here a 40 set, but you can get at the moment, you they the current dash sells up to 84 colors of neo color. Um, they gave up the water soluble metallic colors. They are only now available as neo color one. <coughs> and new water uh, neo color ones are not wa water soluble. Um, I got this 40 set, and I got the the 126 set that they previously had, but but they narrowed the the color range down and because the other ones are, are out I, I'm only showing the 40 set online my 40 set I have modified a little bit I've taken out the black and the white it comes with and I put in uh, I think an extra brown and an extra green or something I, I they are available open stock so if you if you buy a set and you're missing some colors you can buy extra colors open stock as I said the uh, Jacksons they come from a Germany company called Hansel and they have a whole line they got these they got oil pastels and they got soft pastels and stuff like that and they got these aquarelle um, ones and um, they are art quality and um, I have seen at least the oil pastels sold open stock. I haven't seen these ones open stock, but I haven't looked for them either. Um, as far as I remember, these were like 25 or 30 euros, something like that, on on Amazon. Let me check that out. And it's the uh, 36 is uh, the max. Yeah, uh, just under 25 euros today on on Amazon Germany. 
I don't know what they cost uh, other places. So, so that is uh, that's quite a, a lot less. I can try and look up uh, new color. New color. Oh, come on. Two. If you spend 25 or just under 25 euros, you get 15 new color too. That they uh, they're on sale for 23 today, but the norm price is 24.50, and 40 costs seven over 75 euros. So there's a huge price difference between the Jacksons and and the uh, and the new colors. Um, and there's the Progressos. The max set is is 48. I have not seen these open stock. I am um, two trays in the in the box. I like the color range of this and actually also of the the Jacksons. They 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 got some some good good colors for for coloring nature, but there's also some brights uh, in here. I don't mind that there's no not more colors than this in the set because I am I'm confident in my own ability to to mix colors and if I really 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 miss a color I always I can go to other medias water medias uh, for instance the the current dash um, these are deemed light fast on the box but there is no light fast ratings on the the crayons themselves some of them is called names that refer to to known pigments others are just generic names this one is called dark brown no idea what kind of pigment goes in there um, so that that's a that's a little bit of a downside for me I like to know the individual um, light fast ratings on, on different things. The light fast rating on the on the Karen Dash um, nail colors is a little tricky because as far as I remember it is not on the crayon. No it's not. I've heard you can find it on their website. I haven't looked, to be honest, uh, and I, I find it kind of cheesy that you have to look at a famous art supplies uh, producer's web page to get the light fastness. Um, I don't use either for permanent art, for my own art, I use it for both things, for coloring, and for that they are absolutely fine. Um, well, <laughs> that was the Jackson Shashir so These ones, they do have like a light fast rating on them, but uh, it's a five star thing. And if you go on their website to to find out if, because some light fast ratings, t the low number of stars is good and the high number of stars is bad, and in other, it's a reverse. So you, I tried to find out, but I don't really check, and the whole web page. That part is in check, so I have no idea um, how the average light fastness is on these. My feeling is that it is not very good. It's kind of all over the place if you look through all the stars. They, it goes from right from one end to another. So these are also only all of these supplies I only use for my coloring things. So, um, let us talk about uh, how they are to use, and I'll need a, here, let's start with new colors, because that's the, the most, other than being a little goofy about the, the light fastness, I have nothing 
bad to say about these. You can use them directly on the paper, of course. Um, if you're using them for coloring books, you might want to be a little careful because a little goes a very, very long way. So you might just want to put a little smidge in there and then go in with your water brush or your brush and, and spread it over how far you will. You can also pick the color off with the brush directly on uh, and go directly on your paper with it. I got my Caran d'Ache palette that is kind of rough, a little bit rough on one side and very shiny smooth on the other. And you can just kind of scribble a little on here and pick it up with a wet brush and use it as, as watercolor directly. I do that a lot, obviously. And you can do this, th these methods you can do with all of them. So I'll not go through, repeat myself all, uh, all the way down because you can do that with, with all of them. You can even do it with watercolor pencils as well. So, but these lie down quite smoothly and one stick goes a long long way they they really really do how much they cover kind of depends on or how transparent they are i should say very much depends on the on each color the there was a question about my water brush this is kind of a no-name brand i picked up at my local grocery store but it is basically identical to my Molotov water brushes. So um, if you ask for a brand name, Molotov is my absolute favorite uh, water water brush. I also like the Derwent ones. And I think those are my two favorite ones. And I got, I had some that was called Mona or Mono. Mona, I think. I think it's a Chinese brand. They're good, but they wear out a little bit too quick. I have tried Pentel's, and I'm sorry, Pentel doesn't do it for me. It they wore the the bristles went bent outwards. They they kind of went like this after only one use, and I've never used them again. So the nail colors are they dissolve really really easy. They they don't leave any any streaks left from where you put them down see that little bit of color really cover easily cover that whole area now that's a yellow it doesn't show so well on my camera so we can try with the the blue as well now this is a watercolor paper and i scrubbed it in a little bit hard but you can just leave it there for a little bit and it lifts off and moves around just nicely Here's the red. They, when they're wet, they pretty much act like watercolor. They don't bleed into each other as bad as some watercolors do. So, so you, if if it ain't really super wet, it uh, it does what you ask it to. It it doesn't cowley flower into each other and bleed and that's I think it's the that's water soluble wax that that does that um, now I haven't picked colors that was very good for blending I got an ultramarine blue here so I should be able to do a fairly okay purple with this because this is a carmine but of course they they mix okay now I just put them on top of each other here uh, normally I would probably mix them on my palette but you can do it on the paper as well you can go over these with colored pencils after they dry if you haven't put too thick a layer on They are a little more gritty to look at if you thin them out very much with with water, if you want that transparent look. 
and uh, and that's the difference between these and 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 at least medium and high end watercolors is that they are a little bit grainy. But if you want to try out something with watercolor and and you want something that is, I mean even uh, even compared to 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 watercolors, these are are cheaper. A, a stick of uh, one of these, uh, one crayon costs less than a pan of a watercolor. So you can try your hand at watercoloring with any of these really. There is some some things that they can't do that that real watercolor or ordinary watercolor can do, but but you can get the the first feel of it and see if how you like it. Now, when they dry, you can reactivate them to some degree, so you can wash them off if if you made a little mistake somewhere. S but it depends on the color again, and I'm not gonna go through all forty colors but that's that's the nature of things in any watercolor medium some colors lift off the paper better than others some there's especially a thing like flato blue or flato green they don't lift very well once they're on the paper well while others can be now if if lifting is a good or a bad thing depends on how you work and your experience level and all that it can be good if you may have made a mistake and you want to remove it. It is good that the the color lifts easily with a bit of water after it's dried. It can be really challenging if they lift easily and you want to work with glazing where you put another layer on top of something you already did. Um, because it gives a different uh, effect if if they do and if they don't uh, so um, they can that they can do this but but you have to be aware now this is a little bit purple I would have liked it to be purple just there and not here but I could work around that just placing it there and pulling it in it also depends on how much water you use. If you, the more you water you use, the the more likely it is that that the color that already there is lifting. It, if it lifts, it also can blur lines and stuff like that that you might not want to be blurred. <coughs> so that was a bit about the new color too. So let's try the Jackson. I didn't match up the colors, uh, so they are not exactly the same color. Okay, let's go, just kind of the same color ish. Now these are harder than the uh, current ash, and um, I'll try and make sort of similar marks, and they're a little more transparent. But the um, you can put thicker layers on with the Jacksons uh, than you can with the current ash before the paper get. If you put a lot of nail color down, you can't really draw on it with colored pencils afterwards because it gets really it gets a, a kind of can get a waxy buildup. I haven't used enough of the Jacksons to to get there. Uh, and I, I have used them quite a, in, in quite thick layers or quite many layers is more in my case. Um, they're not quite as pigment saturated as the the Caran d'Ache, but they 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 actually dissolve as easily as the Caran d'Ache, maybe even a little easier. I use them interchangeably. If I'm missing a color in one set, I look in the other set and I use them together. And I don't honestly really feel the big difference when I, I do that. 
I like the the, the but that must that is my personal choice. Uh, I like the Jacksons are harder than the, the Neo Collar. They don't feel as sticky to work with as, as the Neo Collar sometimes do. So this is a, more of a slightly warmer red than the other. And again, if you just let some water sit on, on where you put the collar down, it, it fairly easily lifts now this one left a little bit of a mark up here i had a little bit with the blue um so these are a little more watercolor like actually than the the current dash but you can it now i was a little cheap with the color and i spread it over a large area um, but you can uh you can also use them on, on wet, then you get kind of some fluent lines. But I find that if I put them on directly when the paper is wet, I can't remove the, the lines. And that is actually the same for for Caran d'Ache. And um, it also depends on the paper how much of residual line you get. And this is actually the main reason why I use the the palette because I can pick up color from here and I get not all these scribble lines at all anywhere you can of course use them as, as effects and stuff but if you accidentally scribble them in the wrong direction it can be a little annoying and I'm not most of this is all of this is actually Jackson's color so I can them down here and the other benefit of using them as watercolors is that you, you can blend them directly on on the paper this one acts a little more like like watercolor actually it, it bleeds into into wet areas a lot more than the new colors do so if you want to do glazing where you don't want it to to disperse and cauliflower into the other wet areas, you need to let the the previous layer dry before you completely before you add more layers. So I'm I'm really happy with both the new colors and the Jacksons. I like the Jacksons maybe a little bit more but not so much more that I'm gonna throw my Karen Dash out and, and ever only use Jacksons now let's look at the Progresso I'm going to put the aquarelle on this one. So that nobody makes a mistake of buying oil pastels instead. These are are even harder than the Jacksons, and they're more. If you use them directly on the paper, they feel more like a a colored pencil than um, than the two others. But it's not. You don't have to push hard to get to get color on here. Not at all. I can't think of a color pencil brand that they feel like. I think they're harder than most of the watercolor pencil brands that is available. And they're quite pigmented. A little bit goes a long way and, and they dissolve nicely on when you add water. 
they do leave a little bit of residue lines behind, at least on this paper. But again, it, it depends on how hard you scribble them down, what, how the texture of the paper is, and things like that. So. Again, the red maybe leaves a little bit more scribble lines here. So, I'm a big fan of the, the scribble palette. That blue is a, looks a little greenish. So let's try and mix the red and the yellow here and see if we get a good orange. We do. We get a very nice and bright orange. But we get scribble lines. And I didn't push hard on it. So, the the whole scribble line issue with these, and it's also an issue with a lot of watercolor pencils. You can use the, the board, uh, scribble it out on something and pick it up and paint with it. But what you also can do is, um, you can color in an area, um, like you would with a normal colored pencil. Uh, cover it up nicely. Now, let me zoom in because this is, is a fairly rough um, paper. I get a little bit of the white sticking through because it doesn't cover in. It doesn't go into all the grooves of the paper. But I can kind of say, okay, I want to color the square in with red and yellow. And I do it in as much as I, t until I get kind of the intensity of the color I want. And then I wet it. So you, it doesn't really matter if there's a little bit of the, the, the pencil strokes left behind, but you get, it goes in and it, it, it good covers the white spots in the paper and you can even if let this dry and then go in and, and use it as a, as a dry colored pencil again so so that's another way of dealing with the scrub lines I, i've done this a lot in, in coloring books previously now and almost solely use the, the the palette i'm so used to painting it it doesn't bother me to paint but this is, a, is is maybe a starting point too, because all the color is already where it's supposed to be, and you quickly get a very intense color. Um, we can do this also. Let's try and do the same thing with the Jacksons. It's actually way more evident with this that it doesn't cover the paper all that well in itself. Give it some yellow here. Um, now that made it dirty, I'll just clean that off with my brush. Because I don't want red on my yellow color. Oh, there's a little bit of blue in here somewhere too. So when you don't stretch the, the, the color out over a big area, you don't see the scribble line in the, any way of the same manner as if you just scribble a little bit and then pull it out like I did here. So, um, and as I said before, the, the color intensity is also different. 
Uh, if you want to do a gradient out of it from where you didn't scribble, then it's fine. Uh, like that. Zoom out a little bit again. So it, it's only if you if you try to thin it down around the scribble line that you get markings. So. Um, and you can mix any color or color medium you got together. Um, I don't have any pans right here, but you can take if you got a, a pan set of watercolor or tube or something, and you got a color in there that you're missing in the other, you can just mix them in together. Um, like, and you can also use the brands together here. I got a cobalt blue. Jackson crayon. Uh, maybe I would like to use the neo color with it. To make kind of a purple that I, I want. And they just see, they just work beautifully together. Not any problems there. Let's see, it's this kind of purple, so they, they make it. So if you, if you, maybe you, you want to try something on a budget and maybe buy the Jacksons and you want more colors than they got, you can buy, you can supplement your palette with some open stock. Um, new colors on the side, or whichever thing you, you fancy, or can get your hand on. So, That is, uh, that is also good there. I don't know why it, that turned out so gritty. <coughs> Here's uh, the Progresso. And I can maybe make an orange with this red from Jackson. Ah, that was a little bit of purple in there, so it's a little brownish. But see, they work just fine together as well. I think I'll pause the camera and I'll try and pull out a, a couple of watercolor pencils and some watercolor just to show you how well it works together. So I took out my Van Gogh watercolor set here with just regular pants. So... Um, yeah, we got a nice warm yellow Jackson thing here, crayon, and I got a gorgeous vermilion color here that is a, a warm red. Let's see, they mix a fine orange together. So. So if you got a little bit of this and a little bit of that, or they like a small set of something and a small set of something else, you can absolutely combine them. And nobody's the wiser at the end unless you tell them. And here's the red on its own. It's actually quite orange on its, in itself. Try to mix it with a, that's a nail color. And this is just got, it's a lemon yellow from that. Let's see. It makes this just fine. Oh, I think this was uh, the greenish blue from the Progresso. Brush a little bit here. Don't want orange in that. 
And here I got a lemon yellow watercolor. And those two makes it just fine green together. So um, I am really happy with all three products here. Um, and I mean, I really like the price of the Jacksons. I would say if I had not written um, the names down, I would not, if somebody had handed me the piece of paper, I wouldn't have guessed which one was what here, to be perfectly honest. So, um, yeah, the, the, the biggest difference is that the color choice is about half of the, on the Jackson's compared to the neo colors and um, <coughs> <coughs> sorry that that I don't consider a bad thing others might have a different opinion so um, I think that's my conclusion of this this video is uh, they're all good and um, I um, I think anybody should have a set. The Jacksons doesn't set you back that much money. So thank you for watching. Like and subscribe.